Baby Beard! <laughs> All right, I'm a delivery boy! <laughs> Who is Hermes planning on killing? I think we should let the orphans run free. <laughs> you redeem funds. Yeah, exactly. You haven't. You yeah, haven't. He's just an old guy. Yeah. Can we yeah. talk about <laughs> evil Lincoln? Oh, of course. No, oh, this art needs to be sent. That's not the voice at all. That's lobster tail. <laughs> let's, let's make it the Look, Christmas. Let me ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> he was just about to agree with you. Shut, Shut up, up and take my podcast! Oh, that was lovely, guys. Thanks. That Thank was you. in stereo. Yeah, mm. I'll never know. I was gonna no, because I'm deaf in that ear. <laughs> that ear? Which ear? You'll never know. You'll never know. <laughs> Say hi Unless to Sean you... on either side and you'll find out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of them will just feel very neglected. Just like, which, which ear are you deaf in, Sean? Sean, which ear are you deaf in? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Shut Up and Take My Podcast, the few trouble podcast that pits episode against episode in bloody, glorious, gauntlet battle for your entertainment. I'm joined here by Phil. Ugh, what's this group blocking out of my microphone? By Josh. All of my sadness leads to nothing but psychological illness. And, and Sean! Sean! Warden Vogel has been grade 135 for over 25 years. Poor guy. Speaking of grades, what happened to Hermes' grade badge? He's out of the uh, bureaucracy entirely? Yeah, I mean, like, he's, he's, got a, he's a bureaucrat, and he's got a different bureaucrat badge in this episode. Oh. He has the federal bureauc- bureaucracy badge. That's a, yeah. that's a difficult word, apparently, to say. Federal bureaucracy. 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 Yeah. Bureaucracy. Also, one smart fellow, he felt smart. Bureaucracy. I'm, I assume he has the badge. He just doesn't wear it in his regular costume. Yeah, costume. Yeah. Costume. <laughs> but his Jamaican costume. I'm just thinking of it as like he's an actor. Yeah, right? he's say. a cartoon actor. Go to an interview. <laughs> I've been to many an interview and called them auditions, just because I'm used to being an actor. Like, I'm oh, going to audition for this job. We're, I've been so rude. I'm so sorry. And joined here by Ellen. Oh. Oh. If it takes forever. So, okay, full full disclosure here. Um, we, we've record. Well, this is the second time we've recorded this. Yes. This has never happened to us before. No. N- never at all. I thought you were going to reveal that we killed Ellen and buried her. Well, no, because it's gonna, otherwise it's going to be confusing when she appears next week. Oh, Necronomicon. Yeah, that's right. No, no, she fucked off to Edinburgh. So, yeah, yeah. we've had a, we've had a just as a kind of a another state of baby beard address. A, quite a lot has happened over the past. For you guys, two, three weeks. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Phil is now is now a married man. Mazel tov. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Mr. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, imaginary audience. Yeah. I cannot speak today. I like to call them audience. Yeah. Um, Ellen, Ellen, as she alluded to previously, is now in Edinburgh mm. uh, for the foreseeable future until she comes back, which will happen. <laughs> yeah. So she'll disappear because it's a re-record and yes. then she will reappear. And then disappear and then again. Disappear again. And then and reappear and again. Then reappear. And, and then she's gone. And we won't address the fact of anything. No. We'll time just, is wonky right now. We've addressed it now in this episode. Uh uh and we will never speak of it again. Speak of what again? So yes. season four <laughs> episode two Leela's <laughs> Homeworld the first of what I lovingly call the L trilogy. Lovely. I feel like you've said that before. Oh, future Sean has. Yes. Mm, or past Sean. Oh, God. I don't want to start this. Tell <laughs> us some, some interesting details about this episode, Sean. Like, what about the director? Should I talk about the director? Please. Yes. Okay, well, the director for this episode is Mark Irvin, back from A Pharaoh to Remember. Do you remember that episode? Y- yes. I, I remember it. it. Well, if you don't remember, do you know who does? No Bill one. Odenkirk. <laughs> oh, I, was, I was trying to. I was trying to handle Pepperidge Farm. Pepperidge oh, Farm. No, 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 we've used up all our Pepperidge Farm. Yeah, jokes. we're done with that. We're done. Work. Um, this Sorry. is the swan song for Mister Irvin. Mm. Um, and he was. Who, who of you have seen the TV show Duck Man? No, is that the Jason Alexander? Yes, one? it is. <laughs> yes, I remember this. The only reason I remember that is because Ellen flipped out, and that was the conversation we had last time. Yes, the last not this time. Everything's done for the very first time here. This... <laughs> you always remember your first second time. You can just feel it how fresh it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, guys, Duck Hot Man fresh. was a show about a duck man mm. uh, who was played by Jason Alexander, George from Seinfeld fame. He was a private dick yep. and a family man, um, and. That was pretty much it. it and a it. duck. 
and a duck. <laughs> Writing and acting, really good. Animation, deliberately wonky. I feel like it's a good thing to, for making animation shows. Uh, this is a, a man, but he's also a horse. Yes. <laughs> Bojack Horseman! <laughs> also, I realised it just sounded like I went on a tangent. Uh, Mark Irvin's the layout artist for that show. I didn't just want to talk okay, about right. Duckman yes. for no reason. You good. also yeah. broke Phil over there when you said, Jason Alexander is Jason Alexander. It's like <laughs> Phil just like laughing, falling to the ground. Yes. yes. Nice. Um, and it's also directed by my favourite named director... Of Futurama. Oh, Hugh, I remember this Hugh, one. Hugh, Hugh, yeah. um, is there something, uh, the third? Of- That's correct. Oh, yes, yes. Swinton, Swinton O. Scott, the, the third, third. Who was a storyboard artist for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and one of my favourite animations of all time, Muppet Babies. Muppet <laughs> Babies. You have seen do, it. Do, awesome. Do, do. That's the thing, wasn't it? Muppet Babies. I remember Mon- uh, not Monster, Animal is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Just, they should make a, a movie of that. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd Muppet Babies. It. Yeah, I'd watch it. Um, the writer is Kristen Gore, who is the daughter of Al, Al Gore, Gore. Oh, friend of Futurama. Al Gore. Mm-hmm. Yes, because I remember last time we all looked like idiots because we didn't say Al Gore. Oh, you and... didn't, did you? Ah, so you're on the ball now. Yeah, this is like, ah. I was like just PTSD. I'm like, say Al Gore, say Al Gore. <laughs> so this is her sole writing credit. Otherwise, mm-hmm. she's always been either a staff writer or a story editor. Yeah, mm-hmm. she wrote this episode uh, before the age that we are all now. Right. I'm pretty sure. Um, oh yeah. My- that's that Re- sentence made sense. Yeah, yeah, she was 25 when she wrote this. Wow. I thought you just indicated oh, that she wrote it before this exact moment. Which she, that's also true. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, we'll get into it, but um, I think this this episode actually has some plotting and writing flaws. So, um, um, well, speaking of plotting, <gasps> Bill. Uh, yeah. So this is the story of how Leela finally meets her parents, um, and the big twist is that they are not aliens but mutants after all. Mm. Oh, and also air date was February 17th, 2002. What did we think, guys? Well, I mean, <laughs> I really like this episode. Ellen really liked this episode. I'm not a fan, exactly. actually. But yeah. Ellen's not here. Yeah. Look. <laughs> You're replacing Ellen. I right? am I am standing up for two people at the moment. <laughs> because you guys missed out on what was the most intense argument we've ever had ever. Of like, being like, this is a perfect episode. It feels like I hated this episode. I, don't, I, don't, I, hate, I feel right, I'm right, being right, misrepresented right, slightly. Right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I hate this episode. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, that's a much more accurate. <laughs> oh, now Thanks, I Josh. remember you saying it. <laughs> oh, it yeah, of course, of course. Hearing your voice to trigger it. <laughs> Hearing my Cockney accent. <laughs> And I'm, watching me shake my broom about really I'm brought trying, it back for I'm you. I'm trying Wait. to cause an argument again so we can have that like intense discussion. Oh yeah, yeah. Just to let's... clarify, the broom is like that's a Mary Poppins thing, yes. Yes. Is yeah, that, yeah. Does that, Dick does, that follow, does that follow British? Uh, John, is that a st- British stereotype even now? That they are chimney sweeps. That everyone looks like Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and speaks like Dick yeah. Van Dyke. Anytime that, anytime anyone mentions Mary Poppins, I'm immediately like, "Step in time, step in time." Dum, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba. We're all doing, we're doing elbows and arms. This yeah. is just like when we were signoids and we did the hands. This time we're doing like because <laughs> you uh, can't. Oh yeah. yes, yes. Um, a note for anyone who hasn't listened to us do the other Leela episode. Um, a Leela. A Leela of her own. A Leela of her own. You can, we could not do the signoids slash Italians without <laughs> Italian doing signoids. the crab the crab hand, the Italian yeah, yeah, crab hand. We're doing hand. it now. Yeah. We, are, we are doing it now. Just That's imagine, great. just imagine. Uh, yeah, so basically Phil and myself weren't as big a fan of yeah. this episode. And I remember uh, Ellen and I being big fans because of the emotional gravitas of this episode. Uh, the uh, family, uh, that coming together, that vulnerability of Leela, and uh, the, the just... It, being I, nice. I think that stuff works. Yes. Certainly works in the episode. Uh, and they hit the notes that they're going for. Mm. Um, it just has a few pacing flaws, um, uh, a few plotting flaws, mm. I think. So the big one for me is that the uh, the emotional high point for Leela or, mm. or early peak for Leela is when she walks outside with Fry. Yep. And commiserates that while she had a, a conversation with, uh, while well, she just had a, gave a speech where she was talking about her her strength. That's right. That really, what she really wants is is to be loved by her parents. And then it goes, oh look, here are her parents hiding in the sewer. And you go, oh, that's that's the big twist revealed. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the episode tries to play it off as a as a hidden thing with her parents running around in cows, and they've already shown them watching her in the in the in the sewers. Uh, so I don't know. 
what the thinking was there. Look, Look they, I mean, the, the writers, so this is the thing, because they went one of two ways, and they, the writers kind of split themselves into the Phil and Sean camp and the Ellen and Josh camp and mm. that. So I think, Josh, you were saying last week that you liked the fact that they revealed it earlier. Um, yeah, and, and coming back to it a second time, I'm still fine with that because it comes back to my argument of uh, we. it's not for us to realise that Leela's parents are mutants. It's for Leela to realise. So sure. it's like that emotional weight is that she's the only person who doesn't know right up until the point that she's about to shoot. So them. you're saying it's dramatic irony. Yes. But why do they... I still feel like the animators and the style try to keep it hidden for the rest of the episode we're having them in cowls and darkened and yeah but then they immediately have the flashback as well uh yeah that's true they do have the flashback and before the li- she finds out and the line that hit me harder this time and i was like oh yeah it's like he says it's better that we die than her to find out and then it hard cuts to leela chasing them down to try and find out what's going on and she's gonna kill them she's and gonna they- kill them yeah and they accept that. also stupid plan by the parents because the second because all fry needs all fry does is pulls the hood back he doesn't explicitly say they're your parents leela looks at them and realizes oh shit they look like me yeah they must be my parents the second she shoots them she will look and see that she has shot her parents just selfish by the parents yeah really. that's right she'll, she'll get both yeah. right she'll, she'll both have killed her parents and find out they are her parents I oh gen- yeah i no. genuinely think leela would it's have a terrible plan because <laughs> <laughs> probably would be like hey do- oh oh, leela oh, would have you, shot oh. Them, and then she would have burnt the bodies and then she would have just left i don't think she would have even it's a very dark back. it's a very dark version it's Zack snyder's future armor yeah exactly <laughs> pretty reboot pretty reboot yeah leela leela fugitive Oh, um, I like it. If I can, can I front load all the negativity sure. and then, because there are lots also, of... Also, um, just as a behind the scenes, everyone, we might need to boost Josh up. A... What are you? Josh, three? Just, yeah. I am three. Behold my voice as it grows. Yeah, yeah that should, hopefully, if you I get it. Yeah. Yeah. If I have awesome. changed, I apologize. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, are you front load, because there are lots of things I do like about this episode and uh, it's nice to kind of build up to them and yep. then laugh along with those. So I'll, I'll kind of kind of do the things I have as an issue. So I think that the ceremony and the walk outside are not, they're a bit overlong for the pace of the show. Mm. Uh, They hold things up a bit and it takes a bit of a long time to get down into the sewers. So those are kind of a bit, I I feel like there's a bit of a lack of, there's a bit of a uh, handbrake gets put on the episode a couple of times. Mm. And then the thing that really annoys me is um, they're about to be banished from the sewers and Leela decides that she's going to dive into a pool of toxic waste that she thinks will mutate her. And she has no reason to do that. Yeah, sure, they're being banished, Mm. but... She could easily sneak it back into the sewers somewhere else without diving uh, into a pool or, of waste. Or, or have some sort of like weird acrobatic move that where she jumps onto something that's onto something, which means she avoids the lava. Yeah. I mainly say this the because lava. Lava. <laughs> the lava. Lava oh, hard. That, that actually leads me into my point is Leela is believes it's herself so bulletproof and so single minded and like I need to do the thing. Like even uh what we will see in Jurassic Bark is where she she like rips her leotard to jump into the lava, right? Yeah, and lava She's would a bit reckless. Yeah, exactly. I don't think she thought that. I think that wait, Leela's reckless. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I right. think impulsive. L- Leela is more focused on getting them and damn the consequences. So the idea sure. of her being mutated isn't a, f- a factor to her. It's more the she idea thinks of- they'll, they'll get away, right? Yeah, exactly. And the knowledge will be lost forever, and they will disappear forever. I, I would have started. Um, going back, I would have started at the orphanarium. So that scene, yeah. um, that's where I would have started the episode. I would have had um, the flash start with that flashback of um, Leela getting left on the doorstep. Yeah, and go straight into the orphanarium scene. Mm. I don't really need to start with the nose, the um, nose oh, machine. Thing, per se. And, but it um, can do other things. Why shouldn't it? I, that, that joke is so good. It deserves the, it. And the subplot with um, gotta kill your darlings at some yeah, point. Yeah, I think it just yeah, suffers yeah. from pacing. And also, but also how they end up in the sewers and why they get taken to the sewers. Like that's a like how else do you do that except for Bender doing something completely uh, illegal and bringing them into it? Well, here's the thing: I wouldn't even have the Bender su- <gasps> side plot. How would you get them the into the sewers? That's, you- that's what a writer's job is. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that for someone else. I will critique and then you can fix it. Yes. Streamline it. Um, remove some of the coincidences somehow uh, mm. where where uh, Leela, they happen to hide out in Leela's parents' home for no discernible reason. It just happens to be where they stop. Yeah. Remove that coincidence. Tighten it up uh, by having it start. 
further along the plot. Hmm. And I think you've got a better episode. Yeah. Personally. I I don't know. I think that's asking too much from Futurama, which is a weird thing to say. I, 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 I disagree. I don't, think, I don't think I've ever seen... Even even the really good episodes, even the episodes I love, there is just coincidence. There is always coincidence. In... Yeah, no, you look at, I think, insane in the mainframe is 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 a, an example of an episode where every scene ties together, every joke ties together. It's my idea of almost a perfect future it's, episode. And this episode isn't so much for the jokes though. This episode's for the heart. Yeah, which is why I think you can streamline things a lot more because you don't mm. need a, a lot of yeah. those jokes and you don't need a lot of those like that's things you can kill your darlings a lot more. Yeah, um, I agree that that Bender doesn't need. That much time in this episode. No, right? he can come on the adventure with them, but I don't think he need. Like, I, I think some of the stuff that he does isn't particularly funny. Even like when the mutant pops out of the sewer and goes, uh, "Oh, ruined, ruined my, my wedding, wedding dress. dress," and he's like, "Oh, it was ruined when you put it on." He's like, "Ha ha ha!" Um, I'm so funny. Conversely, it doesn't. Eh. Conversely, that is that's not the way to use the word. Um, but what I was going to say in uh, response to what you just said, Phil, is that I do enjoy. The whale gag. Yeah. Uh, the free willy whale yeah, gag. Yeah, gag. yeah. Uh, uh, bend up. Because, you know, there's many things wrong with a whale being shoved down a sewer. Um, you should, he's going to make the mutants mad. Yes. And all the other things that, <laughs> that are wrong, are wrong yeah. with it. <laughs> um, I think it's fair to note that um, this episode, ladies and gentlemen, was number 23 on IGN's top 25. Mm-hmm. However, when they revisited uh, the list once the new, uh, the second run had come out, uh, it got bumped off the list entirely. Oh, right. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's... This episode was also planned before the series was even pitched. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So uh, the writers were always aware that they were going to make Leela a mutant, and mm. they're always aware it was going to lead to this. Yeah. So they have incredible restraint in waiting four seasons to mm-hmm. uh, utilize it. Coming, I... oh, sorry. Uh, coming back to this episode, though, I realized, I think some of the negativity towards this episode wouldn't be there necessarily if we didn't know it was like if this episode we watched it when it was aired and we didn't know it was called Leela's Homeworld and we watched it and then it's like that moment where they look up and then it pans down and you see her parents and Anitha and I'll be like, Ooh. yeah that's a moment of excited, like yeah, yeah it's a moment of like what like that's that moment of like it hits the audience going like wait wh- uh, what and then feeds it through I can't give you an example of TV shows that have done this, um, but I'm sure they exist, Mm. is I like those reveals where it's only revealed at the very end in the third act. However, when you then go back and watch Mm. it on rewatch, you can see all the little times it's like, oh, like, for example, one thing I thought of is like, let's say you never reveal the mutant uh, subplot until the very end. However, in the very opening scene where we've got uh, Warden Bogle picking up Leela, Let's say it's got soft focus, uh, soft focus. So you've got them in the foreground, and you've got the outside street very hazy. Mm. You just see very subtly the manhole cover close. Yeah, it's not drawn attention to. It's nothing. But if yeah, you go back and it's like that little Easter egg. It's like ah, that's like a little... uh, you kind of want like in one episode the nibbler shadow yeah. under the yes. upper desk. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want a Fight Club episode like of like the idea of the, the twist happens, and then it's like oh, I can see the the hints that the whole way through. That's what I would have preferred as well. Uh, yeah. I think overall, in terms of this as a step for Leela's character, um, it's great. And yeah. it's, it's a good bit of writing and planning. And then they, um, in a couple episodes' time, they reuse her parents for Less, Less than, than Hero. Hero. Yeah. And they're a really good addition to the cast. And Absolutely. very very quickly as well. We don't, like, unlike Kiff and Amy... You don't wait 10 episodes or 15 episodes to Bring see them, them again. Back. This is yeah. two episodes later. It's like season four is like Leela's arc a lot yeah. later. Yeah, they start focusing on, on her and giving her a bit more depth. Which is nice. I, I want to pose a question as well. Pose away. Um, what do we think watching it a second time? Is it better, worse, or the same? I laughed at the jokes more. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, found. yeah, yeah. Mm. I had more fun with like some of the little quips. Oh, what does um Morris say? Oh, that's right. So um, Morris and oh, I forget her name. Uh, it's another M name. It is, isn't she's it? not named Maureen? in this episode. She's not named in this episode. She's named in the no. next episode. I apologize, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Taronga. No. Um, so anyway, the parents have um gone inside um the house to escape from Leela, who's chasing them, and she goes, uh, um, shh, be quiet. And Morris goes. What are we going to oh, talk, talk about? about? Like, <laughs> don't, don't say anything. It's like, what was there to talk about? Yeah. Like, That's great. Yeah, I, I agree with you. There was uh, I focused a bit more on the gags, and I do love the humour in this episode. Mm. Um, Fry, in particular, uh, knocks it out of the park in this episode. Um, yeah. From his very... One of my favourite 
lines in this for some reason is when when the little leggy mutant kicks him in the shin and he just does a wow yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's got a really nice cadence to also it. that leg just gets shit, shit on, on. That, oh, oh yeah. my like why was he also yeah. in in their house at the time where yeah. his little baseball cap I really hope it's their nephew I hope it's their nephew or something yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that was the note that I had last time I had in all caps that leg gets shit on oh, and I'm yeah. like um, I like I like how Fry puts aside uh, his like general just terrible personness as well at points as well like with uh, Vogel and he's just like I got dirt and other orphans do you want it it's like I'm busy right now I'll come back for that later it's <laughs> like, I am single minded and focused in helping Leela and uh, I will continue to be a jerk yes. after this is all said and done and shut up guys we can kill ourselves um, when we get home <laughs> yeah it was so good um, Phil I remember last time you saying that you didn't like Leela's speech at the orphanarium. Do you feel better about it now, or...? I, I think I tuned it out this time. Okay, cool. I, I was about to ask, what going. speech did she make? Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the telling the orphans that they can achieve anything. Uh, oh, fuck, and- who cares about that? That's <laughs> yeah. not a good lesson to learn. That was, like, because that was a really big sticking point last time, where I remember that... I just remember there was this argument going around that it's like, that was a dumb speech, and then uh, we were like, no, that's a good speech! She doesn't believe it, but she wants other people to believe it. Well, she wants them to believe in themselves wh- while she can't believe in herself. But I think it takes up too much... I still have the same thing of, like... You have that scene where she gives a speech, mm. and then you have the scene where she goes on a walk with Fry and talks about giving the speech. And you've got you've got like five minutes of the episode dedicated. I think the to speech this gets moment. the speech gets walked away from very quickly. There, it's more the idea of all. It goes back to her wanting parents. She yeah, like, and, and her outward her outward demeanor versus her inner world. Mm. Right, the fact that she's vulnerable uh, and alone. Yeah, but a badass, um, no nonsense. Mm. Uh, pilot on the other hand yeah it's about <laughs> county build- certified pilot <laughs> that's right it's about um uh reinforcing that dichotomy that has yeah. been looked at before mm. but it's just going hey this is the core thing about leela that we're looking at in this episode is that she's got a hard exterior and she- but she's very hurt on the inside speaking of hurt i haven't been able to pick up on a lot of the animation fails as of late oh i can give you one but as well. i got one significant one are you the same one that you're thinking let's find out b1 uh, is it the apron uh, i think the, i am the too- bracelet no the bracelet one obviously that was yeah. the one i picked up last time also quick side note is bananas and pajamas an australian thing only it's- no no we had it in uk nice yeah. you did? Okay, yeah. cool. So people understand that reference. Good. Americans look up bananas in pajamas. Yes, there you go. Um, no, the uh, the three armed mutant now has two ears. Oh, because his first introduction it says we're mostly harmless. I have three arms. All oh, right, and it says he's only got one ear. Now he has two ears. Oh. I, I maybe had it grafted, or maybe the ooze. The ooze. Oh wait, no. Or my favorite line in this episode: "Quickly, the the mutant was quickly the ooze will not affect us mutants." <laughs> I was like. Okay, my, we got that. My nice animation exposition. error is a lot more pedantic, mm. um, and I only happen to be looking at the right space at the right time. So mm. when uh, at the very end, when uh, Leela and the parents are hugging, yep, and then the water comes from above. So before oh, yeah. we do the ceiling shot, Fry has got his hands to his chest with his palms mm. open. Mm. When it goes up, his fists are closed. Oh, oh that that's pedantic. pedantic. That's. Not I have, on. It I is have not a, on. I have a thing that is not necessarily an animation issue, but I think that uh, Leela just really was mean to Vogel. Uh, was that Vogel uh, like nailed it up, and then Albert hits the wall and it falls off, and then Leela is handed it from just off screen to uh, the, the plaque with her picture on it to get a photo. I, oh, that is yeah, oh, yeah. after all that effort he's yeah. gone to. Yeah. Also, I don't really think you can be mean to Vogel. Vogel is Vogel a monster. Is awful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's a he cheerful makes, kind he of makes awful. Jokes about it constantly. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> That's why he's endearing. That's like oh, even oh. Lee loves him as well. Like, Does that like, mean I can get away with that? No. Oh. Okay. You need to raise children first. I can also do that. <laughs> please please Not don't. Well, though, but... God help those children. <laughs> yes. Oh, it'll be a true baby beard podcast then. Aww. Aww. We'll all bring our babies to work. And well, I'm the only beers. one with a child. So. I can get a child. <laughs> I can get a child. <laughs> Just give me 10 minutes. I can get a child. I can get Anytime a... I want, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sean, and I, Sean and I could start a, like, a really respectful home and uh, raise 11 orphans, and then we'll uh, reenact uh, that episode. Bender function? Yes. Question mark. Yes. This is my problem <laughs> does, as well. 1.5. 1.5 Bender. Yeah. Can I, does can he I, take cards? We'll we never it. find out. He just my note. swipes it and that's it. Did the credit card work? I don't know because he's got cash in the next scene. Maybe so... maybe he could have cashed out. He could have cashed it out. Yeah. Does I don't know. Also, does that mean he also has cash in him? D- like, True. If, if, if he cashed it out, right, what it means is he got the deposit 
from the professor. Yeah. And then went out and drew the cash out. Yep. So that he could stand on the balcony fanning the pills. Yeah. Or <laughs> Which is, is something he would do. Or is Bender an ATM. Or he's an ATM, yeah. And yeah, it's yeah, in yeah. his function that he can't break into himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other... The other Partial feature, and I remember bringing it up last time as well, was that Bender's uh, voice is affected by his airways being... Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Episode to episode, Bender has a nose or double. Yeah. It's, yes. He yeah. blows his nose, he can wipe tears away from his eyes, and he can also sound a little bit I more nasal. I think yeah. one episode he tasted something. Uh, I can't remember when, but there was He has no of... sense of taste, which yeah. is a big plot point in The Iron Chef. But he does yeah. have schmission. Yes, yes, mission, mission, yes. Yeah. which mm. unclear and unicycle storage. Oh, that that's so good. Also, I'm really, I'm really annoyed about how he's happy to throw away his unicycle as well. It's just a waste. Oh no, it just drops off screen. This is Bender we're it. talking about. I like the bus joke. I really like the bus joke. We're gonna miss our bus. <laughs> it's just okay. I'm on the bus now. I'm like, that's great. That's uh, like, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's a uh... oh, uh, uh, good moments. Mm. Um. The using fry to smash a window. Oh, so good. That's one of the best <laughs> jokes ever. And just just throwing him on the ground afterwards. Yeah. He doesn't set him back down. He just literally just discards And him. Fry looks slightly disoriented. Oh, and then leading on from that, the mutants following and you hear the one being like, kill, kill, yeah. kill, kill, kill. Oh, Fry is the most disposable friend on the planet. Yeah, yeah. he's ridiculous. He really is. Dude's got like a bruised lung or I mean, something. If, Bender can, uh, if he can survive being squished up inside Bender when Bender turns back from a car, he can survive hitting a plate glass I, window. I, have to, I think we should try and keep a record record of how many times either Fry should have or most definitely has gone to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Surely. Although I don't know how uh, medicine, modern medicine works. Well, he got hands back in like 30 minutes. Well, that's when... true. <laughs> He's also had like his arm sewn back, mm. cho- chopped off and then sewn back onto the side of his torso. Did he get his head cut off in that episode as well? He's had his head cut uh, off. It's, it's yeah. insinuated, yes, yeah. in the end. And yeah, and he survived. He also had his head cut off in a different episode. Yeah. And oh. attached. Yes. Or... Are we talking about Lee? I think I put your head on my shoulders. Yeah, uh, I was, it, is it his head or? Yeah, it's yeah. his head on Amy's body. Amy's body. And yeah. also, uh, it's also when uh, uh, Zoidberg's snipping, and then you hear like, yeah. pff, pff, it goes from face to black. And yeah, yeah. We've solved it. We have solved it. Also, I'm going to judge <laughs> Leela for a second. <laughs> okay. Why, uh, why not change the, the the standard approach of all male viewers of Leela? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Leela's an idiot, and I don't care that she was a kid. She had to have been about. Oh, 10. I know what you're going to say. Uh, Two times three does not equal seven. That is great. Oh, so on her yeah. homework. She had like zero times four is zero. <laughs> five times one is five. Like she got it right, but yeah. it's like two times three. Now that's too hard. Yeah. Oh, nice. I, mean, I saw Sean, like I, I noticed that and I was like just writing that down. And I looked Sean as he leant forward and furiously oh, no. wrote. And I was like, he's going to write two times three equals seven. Two I just get it. plus three doesn't equal seven. No, There's no excuse. It's and the, I don't care that she's an orphan. I think it's the depth perception, the the problem with the depth, depth if, perception. Yeah. If you're the most awkward teen ever, yes, and and it's your birthday, yes, and you find a mysterious gift on the side of the road, she grew up in the addressed orphanarium. To you, addressed, addressed to you. Yeah. What, how would you react? I would. I would open it. I mean, I don't, <laughs> okay. No, here's the thing. I, would I think it's going to be. I don't poop. think I'd be that happy. I would be like, where, I'd be freaked who, out. What? And I'd suspect that it's someone trying to pick on me. Yeah. I think Leela, Leela at that point has grown up knowing what being picked on is like in terms of the entire spectrum, living in the orphanage and like everything. So I think that present is like, this is the least mean thing that's happened to me today. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. But also creepy. I also, also would, you would wear on your birthday, would you wear a party hat yes, walking down the street? I do. I do often. <laughs> oh, I, every birthday. I, every I, birthday. I, I will. Not I even, will, will not will even on my birthdays, just in the birthdays of my close friends. <laughs> um, I would also like to judge Leela, but in a year 3000 method. Okay. She's a mutant. Mutants aren't allowed on the surface. Well, are her are her uh, good work towards Earth allowing her to remain on the surface, or is this some sort of long con? I think she lies about it. I think she does. Well, I guess from now on, she has to lie about yeah. it. Yeah, like mm. there's no record of her being a mutant, so she's yeah. technically an alien. Also weird that they never, because Earth gets a pretty proud people. It's almost like it's an analogy for a certain country, mm. um, <laughs> Denmark. Yes, exactly, <laughs> right. Denmark. No, no one's ever made her prove that she's an alien. No. It's because she doesn't look completely she's... human, therefore she's not human. Well, I guess as an yeah. orphan you can't really prove. That's right, I was going to yeah. say, as an orphan, she's yeah. already on the lower rung. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm surprised more mutants haven't tried that. They're yeah. like, yeah, I'm an alien. Yeah, uh, I why think not? Yeah. I think they need to wash up and everything first, because they're, they're all deliberately scummy. 
Because I feel like, you know who has the best chance of saying they're an alien? Uh, I'm big the race of, guy? I'm the race of foot people. Yeah, that's right. Oh, He's very the, alien. Leg has no chance. He looks like a like a like a thirty year old man's thigh and leg. He yeah, even if he like... was an alien, they'd be like, "You're the grossest alien." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. you have to live in the zoo. Just yeah. urinate. I don't want to think about it, Sean. You, and now, you, you now I have. To. Now I have yeah. thought about it. Where does it, it come out? The big toe. If he was to wear the pants toe. under the knee, if under he was the... to wear pants, would it be on his foot or would it be on his entirety? Let's go back well, to He wears a name. cap. Yeah. <laughs> Is he allowed to wear a shirt? I, have you noticed know, how he swims? Yeah. Where he, he, kickboard. He, he holds onto a kickboard with his teeth. So good. <laughs> the uh, animators had some fun there. Oh, and even the three arms doing like freestyle, like multiple freestyle with the three arms was just lovely. Yes. Well, look, this, look the, the, this episode has heart. It has, it mm. has uh, a nice exploration of, of Leela, introduces her parents as characters. Mm. Uh, which and they're good characters. They, they're very good characters. They they have a uh, endearing quality to them. They they have that ridiculous uh, deference mm. where they just would do anything for Leela and and kind of low key hate themselves. Yeah, which which it sounds terrible, but is played off very well in the show. And they deserve to hate themselves. Yeah, yeah right. that's right. Well, um, mutant they are mutants. So, uh, yeah. here's the slightly awkward uh, bit. This is another instance where we refer to the thing that you'll never hear. Yes. Yes. Um, we do so this all the time. We, we record. <laughs> mm. So, when we did the vote, we had four people. Yes. Uh, yes. And it was uh, Leela's Homeworld versus Kiff Gets Knocked Up a Notch. Mm. Now, Phil, Kicked what... Knocked Up a Notch. Yeah. What knocked, up you notch. Get? knocked Up a Notch. Knocked Up a Notch. Bam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Phil, what did you vote for? I think I voted for Kif gets you did kicked up you a did. notch. I'm pretty I sure knocked up a notch. You did. Fuck. Bam. And Sean, what did you vote Bam. for? I voted for Kif gets knocked. <laughs> and Ellen, what did you vote for? Kif gets knocked up a notch. Nice try. <laughs> no, she voted for for this episode. And I believe. as Josh? did I. Um, and so what we did in that instance was we called up Sexy Chris, mm. um, who we can't do now anyway because he's working. Oh, we could always do Sexy Chris. Busy being sexy, obviously. Um, and Chris broke the tie by saying. Uh, Kiff gets knocked up a notch because man. he did uh, no, yeah. he didn't remember that episode. He's like, I remember Leela's homeworld. I like, what was Kiff get knocked up a notch? Yeah, so he like, thought it was a different episode entirely. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, well, because I don't remember, remember it, it has so, to be Leela's yeah. homeworld. And Ellen and I like high fived, and we were like screaming. But and now you're like, outnumbered. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I wish you guys could have seen it. It was hilarious. Yeah, um, oh, I've seen so it, the funniest I mean, things actually so ever good. been recorded on Baby. <laughs> oh, the the argument was the best. The 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 ending was the best. It was the our magnum opus and you'll never ever 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 hear unless you want to hear a really shit quality version that comes from my laptop rather than the actual let's re let's release that just in case and it's like viewer discretion this is a terrible recording (laughs) so we basically have to 50 minutes of your ears bleeding i mean (laughs) if people watch bootleg movies like with terrible audio and video it's basically the same it's basically the same ever watched an old vhs yeah oh yeah it's vhs for your ears oh it's a retro one release on april wait release on april fools next year oh done on patreon People pay for it. Synths and stuff. It's great. <laughs> so great. <laughs> all, all this to say, Leela's Homeworld is our new season four champion. Yes! Now. It I only s- has I to s- outlast a lot more episodes. Yep. Will it? Won't it? Find out. Uh, how's that? Uh, uh, voice. Who needs your voice? Voice. So who have we got? Um, the Leela's the parents. parents. Leela's parents. parents. Oh, yeah, that's or right. Le- or we didn't do this last time. How about leg guy? <laughs> <laughs> Larry the leg. Or... or um. Oh, only because I'm going for. A, he's got a kind of English voice. Only because I'm going for a, a re-election oh, of supreme. Re-election of he, supreme he, he was in the Chupa, He was in the Chupa Nibra Phil, episode. Phil, yeah. you actually have to do a voice if you're going to do a character. Oh, uh, oh I apologize. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? How did this episode just become piss on Phil for being English? Oh, that's just my whole life in, extra, right. in Australia. Oh, yeah. no, no one's ever done that before. No, never. No, never. 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 Um, never ever. Um, Mo- uh, Mo- Morris, Morris, Morris. Yeah. How does he sound? Oh, she's well, the like least... they got a kind of a New Yorky kind of yeah. twang, don't they? Well, she's the least mutated mutant I've ever seen. That's good. Yeah, sideways mouth. I, I cannot remember his voice. What are we going to talk about? Like, what, are what we... is it? Talk... Like, I, I have him here, but he's not even close to here. He's got a bit of the... Uh, he, he has a bit of that, actually. Yeah, a little bit. You're on... So, you're on uh, my... so uh, we're your parents. Shoot us. 
What? Come on. That's very Raymond. Yeah. Hi, uh, hi, Robert. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, could you, you can hear you, it now. Why'd you, why'd you crash the car through my house? It's really funny, but, you know. Oh, God. Uh, that That's like 15 years I, ago of being oh, relevant. Gee. Know that, uh, Jesus Christ, oh, now we're going Muppets. Now, or uh, he oh, 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 everyone, this is oh, oh, who, who says, oh, no, you're going Morty. Oh, jeez, oh, like, oh, oh, jeez, oh, oh, man, oh, man. jeez. 71 more episodes. We've, uh, we derailed. Whoa, this. it's gone. It's gone. It's, it's great. Wet. It's so, uh, true so, podcast. ladies and gentlemen, if you'd, uh, if you'd like to, uh, yeah, there we go. I think I've got Raymond Noah's gone Kermit again. <laughs> Kermit beef <laughs> Oh, god damn um, okay, it. guys. <laughs> okay. So, this is what happens when we re-record. <laughs> first of all, uh, next week we've got the second of the L trilogy. Mm. Love and Rocket. Yeah, will be coming your way on this special Valentine's Day episode. Do listen out for that Ellen's reaction uh, to finding out of a secret guest star. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> my, I feel like my Ellen is Bart doing Marge. Yes, it is. It absolutely is. <laughs> um, oh god damn it! <laughs> so, guys, first of all, if you would like to, uh, well, Ellen, if you want to uh, contact us as well mm. uh, to berate me. For your just, voice! Just, just yeah. tell us you're okay. Yeah. I messaged you and asked if you want me to say anything on your behalf, and then you didn't say anything, so I let Sean do your impersonation. Yeah. Um, so, for any reason, if anyone would like to contact us, please do so at babybeardmedia at gmail.com. Or on uh, Twitter or Facebook. We're pretty easy to find. There's only one Baby Beard Media. Uh, and we'd love to hear from you. And we'd also love, if uh, you loved it, to uh, give us some sort of rating uh, accordingly. Um, give it uh, one Ellen out of no Ellens here. Because uh, <laughs> uh, then we will be 1,000% as opposed to just straight 100%. And that's let's skew some results in our favour, people. <laughs> it's actually the best way to kind of help us skyrocket up the charts is if you comment us... Um, even if you hate us, comment us because yeah. they all they all help the metrics, and you're all about <laughs> helping us. So help us, help us, help you. Just put a smiley face after anything you write, and we will be happy. We want to hear from you guys. We do. I we want to. We want to hear why uh, you want to hear from us. What? No. Yeah, more quality banter like that, and or or we won't do quality banter unless you comment. And subscribe and like, uh, yeah, it would just be boring unless yeah. you comment, and then you so, won't listen to us. Was that all the plan we'll... up until now? <laughs> <laughs> then we'll yeah. die, and then you'll feel bad. Yeah, you never commented and left a five star. Uh, I it'll... mean, I'm, I'm not gonna die, it's just like it's it'll just be Ellen on this podcast being like, <laughs> Welcome to Shut Up and Take My Podcast. No, no, we're gonna move on to uh, my long since uh, awaited plan of a G.I. Joe podcast. Oh, god, the now you know cast. The what? The now you know cast. Oh, god. Now yes. you know G.I. Oh. <laughs> Joe! And potting's half the battle. Yeah. Um, un- Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Until that time, I have been Sean. I've been a uh, Phil. I've been Josh. And Ellen's temporarily dead. Wait, and Ellen's been... Ellen! Ellen! <laughs> Bye! She's Bye. never coming back. Yeah, I never engaged no. in that, Ellen. She Sorry. Should. If I was her, I wouldn't. Uh, um, Josh... Bye. Oh no, the USB was out again. What? This is a reenactment of last time, except when it actually happened, Sean put his head into his hands and cried. So Predator 2 is set in in, in, in yeah. his city, right? I was talking about Predators. But yeah. So it, it's Predator 2. He's in town yep. with a few hours to kill. That's what it is. Uh, <laughs> it's so good. So the best actors don't need to over, like, over-facialize. They just, they just do. Oh, oh, I've been, oh, I've been over facialized. Yeah, oh. different type of film. Who's got a tiss you? Press, put us out of our misery, Sean. Ah. Press stop, so I have can stop being funny. Shut. Up.